Hi, I'm Oscar. Hi, I'm Michiel. Hi, Michiel. Welcome. Thank uh, you. First time Battle Talks. Yeah. Um, exciting. You prepared something? Yeah, yes. Definitely exciting. <laughs> uh, you prepared something about testing, but yeah. something specific. About snapshot testing. Snapshot testing. Yeah. Um, uh, what's snapshot testing? Snapshot testing, um, shortly explained, is data comparison test. Mm -hmm. So you have some data you put into your function and you expect a certain type of data output. Mm -hmm. You compare the output that you say, this is my golden standard with everything that comes in. Mm -hmm. And if something changes, you get notified and then you need to research why the data has changed. Okay, so it's about the changes. It's not so much about the assert that you think like I'll code it this and like it should do this or no, it it's have actually this only uh, on data assertion. It's not a replacement for a unit test. It's very important to say immediately. Not a replacement for unit tests. It's just on how you assert data in your tests. So it, it doesn't test any functionality. Okay. Is it is it powerful for regression? Even yeah, if it you could didn't be used test to, anything. So yeah, at least it, it changed. <laughs> at least it changed, but mm -hmm. well. Other tests also, you need to change. Uh, if something changes, you mm -hmm. also need to investigate what's changed. But because it doesn't uh, test functionality, it just tests uh, the data and if it's changed, it is very important that the data that you actually say is the correct data mm -hmm. is good. It's actually mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so this, this is another tool. It's not a replacement. It's, it's it, no, it's another tool. It's not a, a different category like unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, or integration testing. It can be used perhaps not in unit testing, because that we already mentioned that, mm -hmm. not in end-to-end -end testing or integration testing. You can make it as big or as small as you would like. Like you can test the data that I put into this method should result in this data, mm -hmm. or the data I put into this whole solution should result in this data as well. Okay, well, this is cool. I, I, can we dive in? Yeah, because sure, we can we dive in. see some code here. Let's dive in immediately. Mm -hmm. um, you should be able to see my screen right now. Mm -hmm. um, I created a very simple uh, application to uh, demo this to you guys. Uh, it's a mapper, and the mapper has two models, an employee and a person, mm -hmm. and it maps those two. Okay, so but the most important thing is the actual tests. Yeah, okay, so it's a mapper, but good to know the case. Like uh, we have, uh, we're, we're mapping an employee to a person or the other Yeah, one? some uh, some person uh, comes into an uh, into a company, uh, It's uh, he or she is applying and mm -hmm. she, he or she becomes an employee. So data from the person object should yeah. go to okay. the employee. Feel, this is uh, a yeah. pretty, pretty static case, of course, yeah, pretty to, static. Yeah. To, to check. Um, but therefore, simple to understand, so we can concentrate yeah. on it really um, is an introduction. The snapshot testing, because you're using a library, I think XUnit or... Yeah, and we're using XUnit uh, for uh, the testing. Mm -hmm. We're also using some uh, some auto mock, some auto fixture and some fluid assertion. And mm -hmm. of course, if you would like to know more, just uh, watch some of the previous beta talks. Perfect videos for that. Did we, did we go into fluent assertions once? Uh, uh, I don't know if it's fluent assertion, but I think okay, at well, least the other ones we did. I think uh, that thing has like 250 million downloads on end unit or on uh, oh, yeah, that's a very big one or something. Yeah. So um, I think everyone knows it. But the first thing, yeah, we're using the um, verify.xunit as the snapshot testing package itself. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also using Bogus to create the input data to make it a little bit easier in the in the demo. Uh, this is just generating data. It's just generating data. You can also um, create a new person yourself and hard code all the strings you think should be in there. But we're developers, so we're lazy, so we use a package. Exactly, so we okay. use a package, indeed. Mm -hmm. So don't think too much and of this, it's the just The snapshot input. testing library in this case, because there are probably more, is Verify. It's called Verify. Yeah, verify.xunit. I can show you in a moment okay. if you would like. Cool. Um, so the way I would like to show you the tests mm -hmm. is in uh, according to how more difficult it is, the first I will show you. So mm -hmm. the first set is a little bit more inefficient, more difficult to write, and eventually I'll show you, I think, the most easy way to write mm -hmm. snapshot tests. So let's start with the first one. You see here the theory, the outer domain data, so the packages we talked about earlier. Um, this case, we see this more often than we would like. You're sort or less recreating the mapper in your test. Mm -hmm. You say the full name of the employee should be equivalent to the person. Dot. That's basically what you would like. Yeah, to, that's yeah. basically the mapper. You to write it again in the test. So very mm -hmm. inefficient. Well, that can be done easier. This is what we talked about earlier. Perhaps mm -hmm. you're already doing snapshot testing and you do it like this. The assertion, some actual data should be the same as expected data. In this case, it's about JSONs. So you have an actual JSON, you have an expected JSON, and you assert of those two are equal. But again, you still need a file in this scenario mm -hmm. that you most likely, I hope not, but create it manually. 
put somewhere. But you basically like misusing serialization here to see, well, this is exactly, exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. But it can be way easier. And this right here, these three lines of code is the same test as the ones above, but mm -hmm. with the package I would like to show you guys. So you just create a person, you put that person into the mapper, mm -hmm. you get the employee, and you just say to the package, verify. Mm -hmm. You don't say verify this specifically. You could do that if you really want to. There is an option for that. In this case, you're not you're not defining. No, you're what not to defining verify, anything. Right? No, that, it that asserts. Is, that is the, the weird part here, yeah, right? Yeah. All the assertions and the verifies are done for you. Mm -hmm. So you remove some human element, mm -hmm. hopefully the, uh, the, the errors as well from the human element, and mm -hmm. it asserts everything for you. It just says verify the employee. Because everything that can be verified is verified. Mm -hmm. It says the data you supply should be the same as the data I have saved somewhere. And mm -hmm. we'll come to that in a moment. So this could be very powerful. It's set up very fast, as you can see right here. It's three lines of code. It's easy, it's fast, and I think it can be reliable as well. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to make all the manual assertions. I think I think the big mystery here is still like, what, what are we comparing it with? Yeah, Where I will show you. Where? We're going to uh, run the way. test. We're uh -huh. going to run the test, uh -huh. and um, perhaps uh, you say, uh, well, you prepared all this, so it's going to pass. Well, no, it's not going to pass because right now it has no data to mm -hmm. compare the actual input against. Mm -hmm. So if we go and run this test, mm -hmm. Visual Studio Code should pop up. Mm -hmm. This is something you can choose what program to use to actually compare the data. But um, it's going to fail because we have no comparison. Because this, this, this test is now, it's using Bogus to generate a person with yeah. some information in there, um, calls the function we're testing, uh, the system on a test, and then just says verify. Ver yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So right here, you should also be able to see my Visual Studio code. Mm -hmm. And this is the data that Bogus, in this case, provided mm -hmm. for us. We see the ID, the GUID, we see everything, and mm -hmm. Bogus, very shortly, makes sure that these are names mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. complies with each other. So the first name, last name are also used in the email. Well, again, it's very important, I state, really do your research when you check this data. Because if anything is not correct in here, you mm -hmm. could keep bugs alive instead of finding bugs. Yeah, th this is the first run, the initial run. This is the initial so run. So this is your baseline to compare the next run with. Exactly. Ah, so exactly. if you run this and there's already a mistake, you're going to be well, you're regression not, testing your mistake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So that's that's very important. So mm -hmm. you could see that that's as a big difference with with manual unit testing, right? Yeah. Like because then you're really specifically first creating your expectation. Yeah, exactly. So again, this is not a unit test. It doesn't test function. It tests this data that I get in, mm -hmm. is that the same mm -hmm. as I think it should be? Well, if you say, yes, I checked this, this is absolutely correct, yeah. you move it along, you save it, we remove this, and we can see that it failed right now, but if we run it again, mm -hmm. it should compare the text file that we previously generated as the verified text file mm -hmm. against the new received text file, and well, have the next time is it passes the same, but did same. Bogus generate the same information now? Yes, exactly. Perhaps you've already seen this. This extra method mm -hmm. use seed mm -hmm. says that it creates the same data over every single over. time. Okay. So if I use a different seed, it will create different data, but it will use the same data every single time as long as I use this seed. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, for example, we change something in our code and we introduce the bug somewhere. We can go to the mapper and we can say, well, the title uh, or the first person is now plus banana. Banana, okay. Yeah, first my, person plus banana. My real uh, issue there in this code would probably be that it would say in the second line or the, the next line, last name is first name. Like I always do that with these kinds of mappers. Mm -hmm. but, um, these kind of things get introduced, and this is super simple. Uh, this is really a example. super simple, um, it's an introduction, but you can do way more many things mm -hmm. right here. You can also verify against an anonymous object where you put in both person and employee, mm -hmm. and it does the verify for you on both objects. Of course, cool. Um, and you can also say, for example, what if something happens with the date time object, because that's also a very difficult object yeah, to test. Real so, life scenario. Yeah, so a real life scenario. Fixed fix something and it has side effects. Yes, exactly. Cool. So we changed our code, we mm -hmm. introduced a bug, 
well, we should have introduced a bug by now. And we say, run this test again. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to see, hopefully, the power of this package. It failed. Well, that's no surprise for us. We go back to the Visual Studio code where the actual uh, data is uh, being showed to us. And mm -hmm. we can see the first name is, well, Yvonne Banana. And the date of birth is not no lo is no longer local in the 16th, but it is in UTC right now. Mm -hmm. And again, very important, but I don't think this is different to any other test. You change something, tests won't run. You really need to investigate why is this change here? Is yeah. it something I expect? Then I say, okay, this is correct. If it's something I didn't expect. If it's expect, a side effect. If it's a side effect, then you should, well, investigate. Yeah. And you, you, you can say, well, if it's a huge, huge file, you should really, it's a lot of work to investigate, mm -hmm. but still you know what mapper you're testing in this case. It's just one mapper. So in this case, um, I assume like you, when you, you have at least your initial, you, you, when you change the file, when you change the result, that gets into your code base, it gets into your, your repository. Exactly. And yeah. then at some point um, in the build somewhere, it says, well, it's not the same anymore. Yeah. And then you have an, uh, uh, a difference. You go back to your local machine, you run yeah. the same thing, it will probably say the same thing, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it should. <laughs> it should. Um, and then you can uh, identify these changes and, well, yeah. well, this was intentional, save it and put it go back from into Git, and then the test will probably. And it, it also like, it, it gives you a log, right? Because it's, it's not only pretty handy and fast to, mm -hmm. to yeah, nail down some implementation. But it gives you a log and what changed and was it on purpose and who, who approved that? And yeah. yeah, well, the, 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 the part of was it on purpose, it doesn't yeah. really show you that no, as well. but you have a git commit, right? On it. Yeah, you have so a git commit, so you can indeed, you can look it back and yeah. research. If Is it's someone to blame? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Some, you can research what has changed mm -hmm. and why this change appear, appears, but the data on its own doesn't no, say if it's correct. It just, no. it changed, look into it. So, but we are obviously going to say, no, 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 this is not correct. We're going back and we're going to fix this mm -hmm. because this should not be the case. And this as well, or business says, no, don't need that anymore. I'm going to save it again and we're going back to the test and we're going to run it again. And it's back it passes green. again. Awesome. So yeah. we un did our uh, little uh, mistake. mistake and uh, we're good to go and start shipping. Yeah. Um, this is this is awesome. Um, it, yeah. Well, what cases is it handy? What cases is it really should do it? Like the case where you really shouldn't do it. Well, we already talked about it. it's just for asserting your data. Mm -hmm. So when there is no data to be asserted on, you can't use this. It's not a replacement for unit tests. Again, very important. So tests like this, I also created a very small unit test mm -hmm. that tests functionality yeah. when the mapper gets a person object of null, mm -hmm. then it should throw an argument null exception. This is a typical example of where you cannot use snapshot testing, you cannot use this package. It's snapshot testing is only when you, you get a real result where you can yeah. say, well, this is, this is not... It should be this result, and am I actually getting that result back? Okay, so. and, and I can imagine you have, because we had some time in there, but like some things will we'll throw in a, I don't know, a daytime now or whatever, because it's, yeah. it's always different. Um, then you get always a different sna snapshot, right? Exactly. Um, this package in particular, uh, so good question, um, has settings you can mm -hmm. include. And the default is that it will actually scrub uh, IDs because mm -hmm. what you say if a new ID is generated every single time. So every, every field single ending time. with ID or just called ID. That's yeah, or you can do that manually uh, if you really like to. Uh, but the default is that at least the GUIDs will yeah. be scraped. Okay. Um, if we don't use this right here, mm -hmm. for example, I remove this, the same for date times as well. If you're testing with date time now, as you uh, mentioned already, mm -hmm. then it will scrub it as well because those will just produce negatives. So by default, all this is so... So many times this is the case, by default it will do that. Yeah, but you have a lot of uh, personality of uh, functionality to change that. So if we remove these settings and we go and run the test again, mm -hmm. we should get a different result, whether mm -hmm. or not you would like to accept that as your golden standard. But this, this is really like a baseline of, all. Oh, this is the standard. Um, you don't have to do this for each and every test to say, well, and ignore these fields. No, if you really want different snapshot tests with different, uh, with different settings, you can probably build a different setting file and implement that on the other test case mm -hmm. 
But yeah, because in this like, case, I can imagine that one test case, yeah, well, here you need to compare the dates. Yeah, okay. in this case, I, um, well, for real short, you, you, you see how it scrubs it, so it just said GUI oh, it 1, and they, it. it anonymizes it, so you don't get any false uh, positives. But uh, what I see Negatives. there, it's GUI 1, so if you have multiple GUIs and there's 1, 2, 3, yeah. so that if you make the mistake of swapping fields, because that yeah. would be a mapping mistake yeah. that we would make, it will still break. Yeah, it should be, awesome. yeah. Someone really th thought about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't have to do it. I yeah. can just use it. Um, so if we should do it like mm -hmm. here, and I can show you where this is used. It's used right here. So you could, of course, make a different file with different okay. settings and use that on a different test class if you think that's really a different scenario. OK, so you, you can, can scope it to okay, Yeah, cost. that should be possible. Um, something else. Like perhaps you say, uh, I've got a lot of snapshot uh, tests right now and it really clutters up my solution because mm -hmm. every single snapshot file will create a verified text. And again, we already mentioned, well, it's a little bit bigger than I hoped for. Mm -hmm. uh, creates the verified text file underneath the actual test class where you create the test. You can also use, for example, to talk a little bit more about the customization options, you can use the use directory should be able to but am i doing it wrong yes i am doing it wrong excuse my mm -hmm. language you could give a certain directory right here like i would have all the verified files for okay. this particular uh, test class in that file folder so you don't have to look at them because normally when everything is okay you don't need to yeah, have access to those things. Yeah, you can store them separately, maybe uh, put them in, in yeah. some nice uh, compartments. Exactly. Awesome. Cool. The actual, one more, one more thing, if you really want to use them, mm -hmm. not unimportant, you need this attribute. This attribute tells the package to use to be able to use it. You need to put okay. users verify attribute at the so top. So you also of the don't have to spin anything up, like it just uh, no, gets included to, uh, and it starts no, it working. It gets included and it starts working. Exactly. Yeah, there's no no not a lot of setup if you hear No, that's the most powerful it. thing. Yeah. It's again it's not a silver bullet, it's not a catch all, but it does have its merits. It's, it's a little bit another tool. It's another tool. You use the right tool for the right job. And, exactly. Uh, it can make our life a lot easier. This is, this is definitely powerful, and I think uh, um, a lot of people didn't know about this. Um, I think so as well. I didn't and, know at all. Uh, it's, it's good to, uh, to add, that, add this in our toolbox. Yeah. Um, awesome. Um, anything else? Um, I think we talked and discussed Covered about it, pretty right? much uh, everything. Yeah, in, in, in short, really be careful uh, when you accept the data as your golden truth, because mm -hmm. that's one of the most important things you should think about. Yeah, yeah. If you start on the wrong foot, um, yeah. you will you will have that bug still around for a exactly. Long time. So, but again, I think that's something you should always do. Yeah, definitely. I don't think it's more of a of a disadvantage than other tests. Okay, cool. Well, I learned a lot. Um, thanks for showing us this. You're welcome. Um, thanks Thank for watching, well. and uh, we'll see you next time. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you.